Hello there, good morning to you. This is Kakaki Social. Thank you so much for joining us on Thursday's edition for the week. I'm Rena Obozege. Reactions are trailing the 114% increase in the salaries of the president, vice president, elected politicians, lawmakers, that senators and members of the House of Representatives, as well as judicial and public office holders. The Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission made the announcement and they say it's coming after they considered its impact on the economy. Apparently, it should be too heavy on it well according to the commission the implementation of the reviewed remuneration packages has been effective since january 1 this year 2023 and that the last one the review was done in 2007 and that's 16 years ago well, reacting to this is Ayamba who says, electorate, how far? Have you all gotten even 2% raise? We are talking about reducing the present cost of governance and they are increasing it. They say no money. You people should bear the pains of subsidy and trek on. Forgotten, Bola Ametinubu and Remi Tinubu government channeling resources to those they think matters, but the 114% salary increment for elected politicians and judges, while NLC under the leadership of Joe Ajero, are claiming palliatives for workers and masses going through renewed shege. Well, renewed hope versus renewed shege. Chide Bere Peter says, Bola Ametinubu is a typical politician of the elite political class. He knows how to appease the elites while taxing the heck out of the poor. That's why the elites love him. And he says, well, congratulations to them. Well, Senator Shehu Sani says, raising the minimum wage of poor workers should come first before that of the elites holding public offices. With this 114% increase, a federal legislator will earn about 2 million naira monthly salary and 25 million naira monthly running costs for his office. I'm particularly interested in this 25 million naira monthly running cost because I don't know what that is. And he says money derived from the removal of subsidy should be spent wisely. And last reaction coming in from Sultan Victor who says this is a step in the right direction at least they will have enough and stop looting well he thinks so but there's this video attachment because uh, Madam President or Mrs. President was trending yesterday because of this video when she said just after they won the election that they are here to help Nigerians and the family does not need the wealth of Nigeria. So let's go back to just after the election to have this video. Nigeria's wealth is the common wealth of all. It belongs to everyone. God has blessed my family. We don't need the wealth of Nigeria to survive but to do the right thing. And I promise you on this altar that with your help, with the help of God, we will set this nation on the right path. Well, to another story, an amalgamation of support groups across Nigeria's 36 states under the aegis of G36 Renewed Hope Support Group has called on the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to compensate them with board appointment because their members stole and borrowed money to mobilize for the victory of the president at the February 25 presidential election. Let's see what they said. <laughs> Your Excellency, you are a grassroots politician, so you are aware of all that we must have passed through during the election. Many of our support groups borrowed, begged, indirectly stole and sold our properties to ensure victory for you at the poll. On this note, we are speaking in one voice, appealing to you that we deserve to be compensated. And they continue to say that... We know that we cannot all be your ministers, special assistant or chief of staff, but you can appoint us into federal boards and agencies which are over 200 in number. Well, let's have some reaction. February 7, 1965, this username, he says, you stole money to support Baba election. Did he ask you to do that for him? He should give you board appointment. So to steal money from the board as usual, you are criminals, and he says nonsense. 
for Etioc, does ICPC and EFCC need any further proof to invite these ones? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, anti-graft agencies should ensure they are not appointed as a way of preventing further theft of public funds. Said Kenya says, don't worry, Bola Ahmed Tudubu will take care of all of you. He's a talent builder. <laughs> if Parastas are finished, he will create new ones for you people. This government will favor you. AJ Collins Obi says, what of those women who sold their vote on credit? They don't say to them, Abi, I should mind my business and face front. Well, Collins, it seems like you are going to face your business and face your front because you would remember what he's saying is that after the election, a group of women came out in Lagos to say that they voted on credit and the APC was owing them against the agreement that they had. So he's asking, have they been paid or you should mind his business? So another story. The Naira currency has broken its own record against the dollar as it traded for an intraday high um, of 18, oh, 815 Naira per dollar at the official investor and exporters window yesterday. The exchange rate of the Naira to the dollar fell by 0.87% and eventually closed at 763.01 Naira per dollar. That's yesterday also. This was lower than the previous day's closing rate of 756.61 um, Naira per dollar. According to Naira uh, metrics, the investor and exporter Forex exchange window opened at 741.21 Naira per dollar. Well, First Ladyship, in reaction to this, says, your Naira is now 850 Naira per dollar. When I said it's all showmanship, you thought I was hating. There is no dollar liquidity in the market. Let the Naira breathe. <laughs> Don't suffocate it. Agbados, you will now understand the economics of renewed Shege. Can you build something or nothing? Well, Father says they have started attacking it. Government should look away. When they are tired, they would desist and the Naira would find its true level they want to force the government to intervene but that would not work and that's in support of the government akbar says when someone said that he would continue from where buhari stopped what do you think no vex me tweeting at nigeria mad it says i can imagine buhari on toothpick right now well to our final story for today i'm coming to paris gender now <laughs> A rights activist, Ayo Shogunro, has narrated how he was arrested and detained by the police in Abuja over the weekend for having an acclaimed suspicious meeting in his hotel room with his female friend of 15 years, who is now married. On Twitter, where he shared the story, he said that the DPO told him at the police station that a private meeting with a married woman is highly suspicious and against the penal code. He's yet to say, or is yet to be sure how the police got to know the hotel he was lodged because it's not in Abuja and even the room number as he only got there about 20 minutes past 6 p.m. The friend got in 20 minutes later and then the police were there in another 15 minutes to make an arrest. Well, he was able to meet up with his engagement in Abuja, but then let's see a part of what he wrote after his release just yesterday on Twitter. He says, when the police arrived at my door, they asked to be let inside. I denied them entrance and told them they had no authority to enter a private space without a warrant or a clear just cause. Instead, they just pushed me aside and made their way in. On seeing my friend, they asked her to come with them. We both asked why. The police replied that because my friend was a married woman, she should not have been in the hotel room with me. I said this was ridiculous. She was a citizen of Nigeria and had a right to meet with anyone. The DPO counted, now they've left the hotel room, they've got into the police station after some yes or no. Then the DPO counted that as we were in the northern Nigeria under the penal code, it was highly suspicious for a married woman to be visiting me and the police were within rights to have intervened and entered my hotel room without all that process. 
She suggested that I was enticing my friend against the penal code. I laughed. My friend and I went back 15 years from law school. It was normal in my world that people, regardless of sex, gender, or marital status, visited me where I reside in Nigeria, and these were always hotels. Well, in reaction to that, Polycarp says, from the details of your story, of course, you wrote more, I think there was something going on between you and your married friend. For her to be chilled, most probably by her husband, says a lot. Sorry, but inviting other people's wives to your hotel room, you need to stop it. Johnson says, in all of these, my question for you is what was a married woman doing in your hotel room alone with you? Was the hotel lobby unavailable or what? Well, Ebony responded to that. He said, what a question. Did you hear him refer to her as his friend? Did he force her into his hotel room? Is she a minor? What makes you think her husband isn't aware of her presence there? Where in the Nigerian constitution was the action of the police justified? Checked in at 6.20 and someone was in your room at 6.40. Sounds like the meeting was planned some days before. Yes, he actually said he told a lot of his friends that he would be in Abuja because he doesn't reside here. And he says, I'm sure her husband was aware of the plans and had the police ready for you both. On a business trip, use the hotel lounges to meet friends. And I think that there's a lesson here for everyone. In Native is Bay, he's saying that, to God alone be all the glory. Meanwhile, I hope it's not your friend herself that set you up. I sincerely hope she is not the one. So that's everything on Kakaki Social this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Our WhatsApp number is 0811-546670. Uncle, would you visit your unmarried <laughs> male friend in a hotel room? I think that advice of meeting at the lobby mm -hmm. would just be it for me mm -hmm. uh, because um, even if you don't have anything, any intimacy with your friend, uh, seeing you in the same room, you know, to many people, they will read so many meanings into it. Do you understand? But if it was a lobby where you used to have meetings, mm -hmm. you can meet other people, anybody sees, see you at the lobby with someone, you may be discussing business, you never can tell, even if you are married, it doesn't stop you from having business meetings with people, particularly people that are coming from outside, you don't know what uh, business plans they have. But then, uh, being in a room, well, but this is not a business meeting. It's you coming to say, oh, my friend is in is town. That? Let me say hello. And they are old-time friends. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, yeah. really. So, I don't know. It's like for them. <laughs> Perry is your gender, like she uh, said. Yes. <laughs> no, we're not going to let you zip your lips today. We're on your matter, your gender. So what would you do? Um, I, I think that um, people, apart from the both of them, had the premonition of that meeting. Um, that was what led to that development. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so. I mean, that, like Uncle said, yeah, your friends you want to catch up, law school, 15 years, I mean, use the lobby. There's also another side of it. What if the conversation started from the lobby to the hotel? No, he, he actually came in 20 minutes before the lady stepped in. So okay. I'm not sure if they okay, had But there's a lot of questions. How the police got to know that she's exactly. there is another thing. Exactly. That would be, oh, we and have to go now. Yes. <laughs> you know, we have really no time to <laughs> delve into this. But yeah, a lesson there for everyone. Thank you, Rena. Do have a great day.